I want you to see something here this morning. I, I'm, I'm just going to go right along with what, what John is, and Cindy have been sharing because uh, um, there were a few things the Lord wanted me to drop on you and uh, to have you consider. And uh, I'd like for you to just to really uh, give me your attention um, for about 20 minutes. 25 minutes here. Because I, I really want to say something to you I think is from the Lord. And uh, it, it's going to sound a little peculiar to you because you're going to think, oh, that's, that's pretty basic. But, but the first one is this, that God loves you. Amen. And you might be surprised at how many people in the church really don't believe that. That God loves them. The Father loves them. Jesus loves them. Holy, Holy Spirit loves them. And because of that, they, they work to uh, convince God that they're worthy to be saved. Uh, I'm okay to be in heaven um, rather than just knowing the fact that in, in that love is God's grace and mercy and, and tender heart. And that He really is a Father. And our origin in the garden was walking with the Lord. The Lord God would come down. The pre-incarnate Christ would come down as the angel of the Lord, and he walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day in the garden. Their natural was supernatural. Uh, our origin is that. God is actually just taking us back to our origin. You know what heaven is going to be and all eternity is and eternal life is? Coming back to our origin. God having a people created after the image of his son and his son ruling and reigning over us for all eternity. And we absolutely growing and thriving and, and uh uh, flowing in that forever in His holy presence, in His love. But the fact that God God loves you, to really be convinced of that so you don't fall into the traps of works religion uh, under the law, uh, performance-based religion, uh, performing to, to convince God and others that you really you know, deserve heaven. Uh, there's a lot to that. The, the second thing that I, I want to just mention to you, and then I'm going to go to the Scripture here, and we're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter one. Okay, Lisa. Uh, the thing that I want to I want to say to you is, is, you know, you have to let God love you. You'd be surprised at how many Christians do not let God love them. They do not let God love them. You say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, just this. Have you ever met a person and they will not let you love them? And, and regardless of how friendly you are, uh, how close you may work at, uh, together or shop together, neighborhood, or it's in your own family, it, it, you can always tell there's just always a little bit of this. And they're not really going to let you love them. Just always a little bit of this. I'm just not going to let you in. And, and, and this is something that it goes on in the church. And uh, being in ministry for 50 years, I just want to tell you, I've encountered this multiple times, that there are some precious sons and daughters and my brothers and sisters in Christ who are washed in the blood, who have eternal life. No question about their salvation, but they are never going to let God love them. So they always think that God has it in for them. They never think that they're worthy. They never get out of that condemnation thing. They never get out of that self-pity thing. They never get out of uh, the works religion, the performance-based life. You've got to prove to me you are worthy of my love. Rather than just what really true love is, you just love them. If you have to earn my love, then that tells me something about me. That you really don't trust me. Why won't you let me in? Why won't you let me love you? I speak in all holiness and purity here. Why won't you let that happen? You see, and just transfer this not to an earthly father, but the heavenly father. Why... Why won't you let God love you? Why do you think that the inheritance that you have in Christ is not for you? 
that prosperity is not for you, that uh, healing and health is not for you, that uh, the salvation of your family is not for you, that um, being able to rest in Christ uh, and, and live a life of joy and peace uh, somehow is not for you. And it, it's, it comes from not letting God love you. And this is something very real in the church. This is something that, and this is the thing, uh, the Lord is changing about His church. Um, I'm talking about the real church, the holy church, the holy remnant. It, it, uh, they're becoming a bride. And what does every true bride know about the groom? He loves her. And she knows it. And she believes in his love. Yeah. She knows it. Yeah, I'm talking about a true. I'm not talking about any phony thing or any anything false. A true bride with a true groom, she knows that he, he is she is loved by him. And she knows that and she believes in that love. That's why she is giving herself to him, body, mind, soul, and spirit. And she is uniting her life and her future, her destiny, with another individual, a man, that she believes is going to carry her forward, you see. And then with Christ, it's just the same. But we transfer it to our Heavenly Father, our Lord God. And some people will not let God love them. You see, the Lord chooses First uh, Corinthians. Let me let me get there. First Corinthians. I want you to see something here. I I believe it'll be an encouragement to you. Uh, this, this passage has always has always caught my attention. It's always been a part of my spiritual life. But here in First Corinthians, chapter one. And Paul, he's, he's addressing this church. He, he greatly loved the, the, the Corinthian church. Uh, uh, but the Corinthian church not only was, uh, was, could be very spiritual at times, they could also be very carnal at times. And he had to talk to them, you know, both ways. You know, you have all the gifts operating there and the spirit flowing and you're prophesying. But, but you're at each other's throats. You know, you criticize each other. You, you get drunk before you come to communion service. You're a glutton over here and you're finding fault over there. Are you not yet carnal? You know, and so he had this, he had this, uh, this, uh, paradox. You know, they could be very spiritual and flow in the spirit and prophesy and, you know, everybody would bring a contribution, you know, uh, to, to the service, to their, to their gatherings. And other times they were totally discombobulated. That's a Greek term for uh, they were really missing it. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the thing that I want you to see is what, is what Paul is, is saying here. And he goes through a lot. And I just want to bring you down to verse 26. All right, verse 26. And uh, here's where we're going to begin. And there's something very... Very beautiful about this, because keep in mind what I've already said about God loves you. And to be able to accept that, and you believe in that love. John says, we have known the love that God has for us, and we have believed it. We believe in that love. Alright, so here, he says in verse 26, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh... Not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are nothing, are not, or they're, they're nobodies, He says, to bring to nothing the things that are. Why? Well, so that no flesh will glory in His presence. But of Him, you got to keep reading, but of Him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So as it's written, let Him who glories 
glory in the Lord. Now, 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 what I'm, what I'm wanting you to see here is that the Lord chooses the individuals the world does not choose. The world chooses the mighty and the glorious and the glamorous and the famous and the wise and the mighty and the noble. And they preen themselves down the red carpet and they sit on thrones and they they seek to power it over people, you see. And they walk with an air about them where their nose is slightly turned up and they know that the world cannot get along without them. And so what the Lord does is He chooses you and me. And if you're offended by that, then you need to talk to the Lord about a little problem called pride. But but what he does, and this is the thing, is what he does. Now, don't miss this, because a lot of people say, oh, that's right, I'm, I, I'm just nobody. I, I, I'm a nothing. I, I. No, 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 that's not, that is not the spirit of this passage. No, he takes the nobodies, he takes the weak, he takes those who aren't, don't think they're the last God's gift on earth. He takes them and He brings them up to levels far above themselves to where the wise and the mighty and the powerful and the noble just kind of rock back on their heels and say, well, how did they get here? How, how come they can do that? Why do they have that? And they are rock back and then that person who's been elevated to those spots, brought into those positions, given those things, they say, well, it is the Most High God who has done this for me. And He gets the glory rather than those people get the glory. Because the mighty, the noble, the famous, the big shots, they're taking the glory. Hello, I'm here. That, that's them. They get the glory, so that's the end of it. But for you and me, we pass the glory on. We know it's the Lord Jesus. So the Lord Jesus will take a pig farmer. I grew up on a pig farm, and we raised horses. and we had, I grew up on a farm, and then He can take that boy, and He can change him, and then He can send him all around the world like He did me over the last 50 years. And He can use that boy through the grace and the gift of Christ to raise up churches in other lands. As, as, as well as here in America. That, that's God doing that. You say, don't miss it. That is the Lord Jesus Christ in me doing that. And I know it. And Lord, I give you all the glory. But you see, people, they read this passage many times in churches. And they say, oh yeah, that, that's right. I'm, I'm just a stupid, dumb, no, no, no. That is not what the Holy Spirit is saying in this passage. It's just the opposite. That God takes the nobodies and the nothings and He raises them up into positions of privilege and power so they have influence. So they become, here, listen to it, benefactors. Benefactors. And they can pour themselves out, pour their resources out, pour their life out on others. And others are blessed and, 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 and promoted because of their influence, their life. All, all we parents, we know this, don't we? We pour ourselves into our children because we want to see our children move up above us and be promoted in all the right ways for all the right reasons. But you know what I'm saying. This is what is our heart. It's in my heart to see my ten. Every last one of them. Not nine. Not eight. Not seven. Not six. Not five. Not just a couple of them. All ten. Move up. Beyond me and their mother. Move up. Spiritually in the kingdom. Move up. In life. Move up. Move up. Move up. Move up. So I pour myself in. And how, what did we, Cindy and I, do? We love them. And they receive their love. They know that we love them. When we meet these big old kids now, they hug us. They kiss us. They tell us that they love us. I mean, that is worth everything. You know what I'm saying? But you become a benefactor. God chooses who He says here. And then He elevates them. He moves them to a place to where they become, now hear it, gatekeepers. Every parent is a gatekeeper for their child to another place. Not just where they're at, 
but beyond them. Thank you, Lord. you Christian, you are a gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. So that the people you meet, you can open doors for them that would have never been opened before. You can take them places by the Spirit where they've never gone before. But if you don't think that you are important enough to do that or to be that, then you will always be unimportant. And God will not be able to fulfill what He wants to do in your life and bring through you because of that false mentality, that false poverty, that false humility. Because God takes, we recognize, I'm one of these, I'm one of those foolish. You don't know me before. You're seeing me as the best I've ever been after 50 years of Christianity. Okay, You don't know what I was like. She does, but you don't know what I was like when I was in school, when I was a young man. Yeah, you don't know I was in some way shameful. You don't know how weak I am. You don't know, you know, you don't know. No, but what God does is He knows and then He takes and He elevates. And that's what He does for you and me. And we become door openers. We become gatekeepers. And as long as you have these false mentalities and self-pity and I'm not worthy and blah, blah, blah. My God, you will never fulfill your calling and your destiny. And as long as you hold back You will never fulfill it. God is always, I'm always seeking to push people forward. I want to push people forward. I want to get you up here, do things you've never done before. Because you've got to discover your gifts. And some of you know what they are, but you just sit on it. Or you deny it. Or you back off on it. Or you're hiding on the corner. And the Lord is not calling you to that. See, He's 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 going to send somebody along to stir you up. Just like John was doing and Cindy were doing, going to cause you to, and he's going to bring uh, people into your tent so that you can minister to them. I, 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 you're called to raise up others, and that's what that's what this is all about. Listen, listen. I want you just to think: God will take you, and He will bring you into a place you have never been, far beyond yourself. Far beyond your education, far beyond your social contacts, far beyond your pay grade. You all know about your pay grade. He will elevate you to places far beyond that if you will believe him and you will believe that he loves you. And you will let him love you. And not shut him out now when he starts talking. Come on, daughter. Come on, son. And you just, Lord, I I don't know if I I want that. And you let him love you. You say, where are you getting that? From the Holy Spirit? It's in the book. You say, where? Well, how about Joseph? How about Joseph? Joseph had these dreams. God is telling Joseph, Joseph, here is my dream for you. One day you are going to rule the world. And your brothers and your mother and your father are going to come and bow down to you. Now why would you tell a teenage boy that? It got him in all kinds of trouble. It got him in in the pit. It got him in Potiphar's house. It got him in prison. And then finally it got him in the palace. But the palace is last. But what did God do with Joseph? He took him from a nobody, being despised and hated by his own brethren, saw him as stupid, saw him as nobody, and he just worked him through his process, our Lord and his love. And Joseph, this is the beautiful thing, Joseph knew the Lord loved him. That's why he didn't grow, give up when he was in the pit or in Potiphar's house and he wouldn't sleep with her wife. The Lord loves me and I fear him. I'm not doing that. And when he goes into prison and he's there for not, not 20 days, 
not two days, but a couple of years, even after he talks to the baker and the butler, and they just forget him, he still loves God. He still knows the Lord loves him. You know, he, he, God wants to do something with you. He wants to make you a benefactor. What did Joseph become? A benefactor. Who did he feed? The whole world. Who did he come under? He was equal to Pharaoh. Only Pharaoh sat in the throne. And yet, right here is Joseph. And whatever Joseph said, Pharaoh did. And Joseph knew he was a nobody. But he'd say, my God will give you an answer. And he gave him the glory. You say, hmm, well, okay, I can see that, Pastor. That's pretty good. Uh, well, how, how about Esther? Esther, ladies? Esther? Ladies, Esther? Esther, a nobody? A Jewess? A little, a beautiful woman, beautiful girl, Jewish girl, in this foreign kingdom, you know, under the Persians, you know, all that. Artaxerxes and all that. You know, what about her? Well, the Lord just maneuvers that all around and she comes into the palace. Far, by, far beyond her gray paid, pay, <laughs> her grade level. Far beyond all that, beloved. Far beyond all that. And she's, she's touching the scepter of the king. Boom. And she's getting what she wants for her people. And God raises her up. And what she do for her people, for all her people, her influence... Saves the whole nation. Preserves them. You see, if you know that God loves you, and Esther knew that God, and do you know that in that book God is never mentioned? Not once. And yet all the way through the book it's God. Mordecai, God. God is never mentioned by word, by title in that book. And yet you see it's God all the way working through his sovereign plan through her and Mordecai to save his people. Because one day Messiah is coming through that bunch of people called Israel. And they got to be preserved. So there's Esther. For far, far, far beyond herself. You say, well, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, Pastor, that'll be affirmed. Well, here's a third witness. How about Daniel? Shall we talk of Daniel? Daniel. Now, who's Daniel? Well, Daniel's one of those te bo teenage boys that get shipped off to Babylon. He probably sees his parents killed and his family all killed off there in Jerusalem. The city is leveled. And he's, he's toted off in chains into Babylon. And he comes under the care of a eunuch there. And the eunuch begins to train him and his three buddies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they begin to train and teach. And, and he's different. And he says, you know, I, I'm nobody. I have nothing. You know, think of it. Being in Babylon. B Babylon. And yet here he's going to serve his God. And the Lord has a way of just, just maneuvering Daniel and, and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego through all these different maneuvers. And they stay faithful and true to their God. And they start moving into positions and places and a pay grade they could have never gotten in themselves. Do, do you see what the Lord is wanting to encourage you about? That man, when you walk with the Lord, you've got God's favor. I mean, I, I, just, I can't tell you... Folks, when I go places or do things, I always say, I say, Lord, give me this... This great um, unfair advantage of your favor here. And I expect it. So, uh, listen to the Okay, so, and it's right down into my everyday life. So, i got to quit here. I'm going up Friday night to watch my grandson play football. They're in, in sectional football. They're playing in the sectional. My grandson's playing on the team. They won. Uh, but I'm on my way up, so I'm going up to Indianapolis, all right? And i got to cut through Indianapolis and then on up into toward uh, McCordsville and Fortville. It's uh, northeast of Indianapolis. And uh, I get up in there, and, and what do I hit? Traffic. How much traffic? It's stacked up for miles. 
I'm wanting to get on 465 and swing around that thing and get on 70 and swing on out and go up on up to Fortville. Can't do it. I mean, they're stacked up. I'm driving along. I, I just drive on past. I say, Lord, now what am I going to do? Because I want to be there to watch my grandson. Man, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I've got it timed perfectly, you know, if without traffic. Duh. You know, that's right. That's right. I'm one of those weak, one of those silly, you know, one of those no by duh, you know, but I got it timed just right. I'm going to be there without traffic. But there, no, there's traffic. So I go on up and I go on up. And, oh, no problem. I'll just run up 65 and hop on 70 up there. I don't need to go around 465. And I get up there and I start seeing signs. 70 close at the junction of uh, 65 and 70. I'm not going to get on 70 and run east. No. As I said, Lord. Well, see, I know, I know there's a street in my head because I used to live up in Indianapolis. I know there's a main street that runs through there called Washington Street. And if I get on Washington Street, I can run it through with 10,000 lights. 10,000 light, traffic lights. I'm a little hyperbole, but you get the... And, and rush hour traffic. They're all, everybody's wanting to go home. So I say, Lord, give me favor and I want to thank you, Lord, for giving me green lights. Amen. As the Lord is my witness. <laughs> I got in that right hand lane and I started down Washington Street and every light green. It was red and then suddenly green. Green. And I just kept booking. I got there five minutes before kickoff. Five minutes before. You say, oh, that is our God. That's how much He loves us. You see, I, I appreciate what John said. You know, we think of signs, wonders, and miracles. You know, the sky is falling. No, no, it's just that kind of everyday thing. And you actually let God do this with you. And bring you into this kind of beautiful, loving favor. He, he loves to do this for you. And, and so I'm going to close because we're going to, we're going to move ahead here. But beloved, will you let God love you? Now, I, 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 the, the Lord really wants you to get this. Do, number, do you know that He loves you? That you don't have to convince Him that you should go to heaven. Do you know that He sent His Son to the Lord Jesus Christ and that is why His Son came? So that you and I don't have to convince Him. He has to convince us. He has to release His grace on us so that we have our eyes opened and our ears and our heart. Oh, Lord, I, I, I am a sinner and I, I need to be saved. And you, you receive it. And so you really know that it's true and He reveals Himself to you. And then after that happens, then you let Him love you for the rest of your life until the day He calls you home. You just let Him love you. Well, you believe His promises and you walk with Him by faith and all of that. Yeah. But, but you know you have a Father. Not a God. Not a judge sitting on a throne up there ready to lower the boom on you which is what a lot of Christians walk in. But you have a loving Heavenly Father, you see, who really cares for you. And you have a Son, a Lord, His Son, a Lord who is a man, who is a human being like you and me, except no sin, no pollution, like you and me. He, no, nothing of Adam touched Him. But very a human being, just like you and me. And one day you're going to stand and you're going to look him in the face. And he's going to look back at you with two human eyes. He's going to speak with you with a human mouth. He's going to reach out and hug you with human arms. And say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's coming. A lot sooner than some think. But it's going to happen. And it's because He loves you. And the Holy Spirit directs you into the nature of God. And John said, God 
is love. And the nature of God is to love. So he's not rejecting you. That's the devil's lie. He's not accusing you. That's the accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12. That's the devil. You say, I just, as a pastor, I just, I just start straightening people out about that. You know, they're, they're talking evil about somebody. They're criticizing somebody. I just start, I just kind of let them know I'm not pleased with that. Don't be standing here speaking evil about somebody to me because that does not uh, register right in my spirit. Because I know if you'll do that about them, you would probably do that about me. I would just have to probably flip the right switches. On you, and you would, unless you're like Christ like, and you're ready to forgive, and you're quick to forgive and quick to love. You say, I, The Lord loves us, and, and that's manifested in forgiveness. See? His love for us is manifested in forgiveness. And you don't know how big that is. Maybe some of you do. It's a big deal to be forgiven. It is a, I mean, come on. Have you had people in your life you've had to forgive? I mean, genuinely forgive. That's a big deal. That that cost you something to forgive them. You had to lay aside your offense. You had to lay aside your pride. You know, you had to kind of fit back in here in 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1. You know, for you to forgive. And then we just transfer to the Heavenly Father, and He's so quick to forgive. He's so faithful to forgive. He is forgiving me, and forgiving me, and forgiving me, after He first forgave me, back in November of 1970, when I got saved, and He forgave me of all my sins, and since then, He has been forgiving me and forgiving me because I mess up and I'm not perfect and I don't pretend to be anymore. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah I, got sh- I shucked off that old... You, know, you ever shuck corn? I did as a boy. Didn't like to. Anyway, I just shucked off all that, you know, that religiosity stuff. I think, you know, here you are. What you see is what you get. If you like it, hallelujah. If you don't, hallelujah. <laughs> because, you know, I've been forgiven then, you know, so I'm forgiven. So, so here I'm going to close. Second one, final. But here, remember Cindy and I went to our, our 50th class reunion. Now, we, we, it was canceled last year because of the COVID thing. So we celebrated it here in the 51st year. And we had some 50 of our classmates and their, and their wives and so forth show up. We had a great group. And I had been invited to come and to pray. Uh, they know I'm a pastor, or some of them did, to come and pray the blessing over the meal before we ate our meal. And so uh, I'm thinking, Lord, you know, just, just bless me. In my, you know, I'm just saying, Lord, just bless me in, in, in thanking you for the food and all that. And, and the Lord begins to drop this thought on me. I want you to apologize to them. And I'm shucking that off. I'm shucking that off. Eh, you know, I'll pray over the meal. You know, I'll, you know, I'll bless them. Hi, everybody. Hey, let's pray over the meal. Lord, bless this chicken. You know, but it persisted. He just kept saying, I want you to apologize to them. And they got stronger with me. My father can talk to me this way. He said, I want you to ask them to forgive you. Lord, 50 years ago? Lord, 50, you know, just like this, it was quiet. Lord, 50 years ago? He didn't rescind. So, I'm... I, you know, the, our, our MC, Doug, a dear friend of mine, is up there. He's you know, doing all the introductions and he's talking. And, and he told one story about me in school and, and everybody's laughing. And, and, he, and, he, and he honored me. You know, he honored me. You know, he's a precious man. And he honored me in, in the introduction that I was to come and, and to pray. And, 
And as I'm sitting there, you know, I'm uneasy. And you know, I'm uneasy because I'm thinking, Lord, do you really want me to ask them to forgive me? Do you really want me to apologize? This, this is a class reunion. You know, this is all, woo, you know, hey, you know, it's good to, good to see you. We're not going to lay anything heavy on them. But, but see, you have to understand that, that God can change a man. And what I was 50, 51 years ago is not what I am now. See? And what I did and what I said back in those days. And, and I've told you I was, not a, I was not a very nice sinner back in my high school young days. I did things to people. I said things to people. People were afraid of me. Is that, is that what I want to grow up to be known as? Barnett, you need to be afraid of him. And so though I'm sitting there at that table and this thought, do it. <laughs> do it. The Lord's not repeating himself, you know, about what he wants me to do. He's just saying, he's get, he said, do it. And I get up there, the, you know, microphone, I saunter up there. <laughs> And I'm greeting them, you know, and people are out there kind of waving at me and, you know, if you know, and they're smiling, you know, it's so good to see you. Cindy and I have been so excited about coming and seeing you, you know, after 50 years, da, 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 da. And then out of my mouth, he says, you know, I, it, maybe some of you have heard, but 50 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ came into my life and they stopped laughing. I said, the Lord Jesus came into my life and uh, he saved me, and I've been in ministry now as a pastor in a ministry for 50 years. And I said, uh, I said, uh, I just want to 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 say to you, all my former classmates, I'm sorry. And they laughed again. They laughed. And then I, I don't even hardly remember this, but I moved into something else. It was the spirit. I said uh, something to the effect, uh, No, I, I'm really serious with you. Uh, I'm apologizing to you if I ever hurt you, if I ever ignored you, if I ever offended you, if I ever sinned against you. Because what I was then, classmates, I'm not now. And um, then I prayed for the meal. That's kind of the way it went. Was that right? Pretty close, huh? So afterwards, I have classmates coming up to me saying, you know, Jeff, I don't, I don't ever remember you doing or saying anything, but, but will, you, will you forgive me if I ever did anything to you? Come on. You know, and one of them, Pat, anyway, said, said I, I want to thank you for taking me home from school after football practice. I never thanked you. I, I never appreciated it. But how you would take me home and drop me off at, at my home. I said, well, I, 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 of course, you know, I, I talked to him. Man. But it is an amazing thing when the Lord can take somebody and brings them into positions an influence and a pay grade far beyond, them, far beyond themselves if they will allow it. Will you allow Him to love you? Father in Heaven, I just want to thank You for the Word this morning. We, we thank You, Father, for what You're doing in our hearts. The Father, the things that that you're doing in us are not observable on the outside, but, but surely, Lord, they, they will show up in the manifested fruit of your goodness and love and kindness uh, in the days uh, to come. We thank you, Father, that you are able to take us and shepherd us, Lord Jesus, very gently. And your gentleness is what makes us great. It is your gentleness is, is what makes us effective and effectual uh, in, in this world and in the lives of others. And Lord, you have called us and you bring us in as gatekeepers. Lord, you are the door. 
and we are privileged to be able to open that door through you, Lord, to others. And, and they can come to know you and to love you and then to live with you for all eternity. So bless, Father, the simple words that have been shared this morning and bless our time of fellowship as we love each other. Uh, and Father, we just want to thank you uh, e- even um, uh, more, Father, than just with mere words, our hearts. We're so thankful. And Father, we thank you. We had the joy of, of worshiping you this morning with the worship team uh, and hearing John and, and Cindy Lord share and uh, David, all the ones who have contributed uh, with Eddie and Carol back at the doors and manning the counters and uh, Paula with the kids and all these things, Lord, that make up your church. Lord, what would we do without without them? Lord, thank you for your kindness to us. We love you. And Father, bless the food to our bodies. Bless the food to our bodies as we partake. And thank you. Bless each one, Father, who has contributed and brought something in for the enjoyment of all. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, saints. Um, Cindy, do you want to bring some direction here about how we're going to handle this? Now, uh, Eddie, uh, you do whatever you need to do. But uh, we're going to be judging, um, and I have one other, I have a precious sister, Linda, who's going to be joining me, and we're going to judge these chilies, and may the best chili maker win, and that'll be your, your reward. Did you bring the blue, blue ribbon? No. You didn't bring the blue ribbon? No. Okay. <laughs> You'll just we got a blue a, ribbon, but we didn't we bring it. We have a blue ribbon. Okay. Go ahead. Well. First of all, we're, while the judges are picking out the, putting the sample of each chili on a plate, we need to have all the tables and chairs set up just across the back, I guess. We have one, two, three, four, five tables we can use if we need that many. So if everybody want to help do that, we'll have the three judges come up and get a sample of each chili. Yeah, now let me just say, guys, if you're pulling those tables especially the one back in the corner. Be very careful. Uh, Paula's uh, got may those. Not even need those that one. May not need that one. Yeah. But we have these two. We have those two back there. Um, there's an, also another one if we need it in the roots room. So just go ahead and, and uh, start moving those in position. Great got job. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay. So uh, just go ahead and uh, we'll set things up and we'll get we'll going We'll get a here. table for the kids too. And we'll need that table. And then yeah, when, John, you want to bring, after tell they them get, we're done. You want to go back and get them. After they get all their chili, then we can all line up. And the plates are over here. And I want to thank Carol again, because she organized all this, did a great job. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Get your uh, bowls and all your silverware and stuff there. And then you can go around both sides of the chili table. Just uh, watch out. There's a carpet there covering all the cords. And then all the extra stuff is here, and the desserts and drinks are back there. You'll be able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> and the judges are doing this. As a freebie. <laughs> yeah, just I uh, didn't know. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching. Jeff Barnett is pastor at Genesis Church of Seymour. For more information about Genesis Church, go to the website, https colon slash slash seymourgenesis.com. Service times are each Sunday at 10 a.m. Genesis Church is located between US 31 and I-65 on the north side of US 50 in the shops at Seymour.
Visit the Genesis Church of Seymour page on Facebook. View the messages from the Genesis Church of Seymour channel on YouTube. The physical address is Genesis Church, 357 Tanger Boulevard, Suite 206, Seymour, Indiana 47274. Thank you again for watching, and may God's word continue to grow in your life. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the inside the box, too.